The human defence system, this is part two and it's focusing on the specific defence system. The specific defence system is all to do with antigens, these molecules found on the surface of cells that identify them as being foreign to your immune system. So pathogens, for example, bacteria, viruses, they would all have their own unique antigens that say who they are and identify them as being foreign to your immune system. So if they ever enter your body, your immune system recognises them immediately as being foreign. Make sure you can define what an antigen is. Antigens stimulate the production of antibodies and know a little bit about them. So know that they are protein and carbohydrate based molecules. And the reason why antigens start off this immune response is because your body recognizes them as being foreign or your immune system recognizes them as being foreign. The reason for this is because your own body cells have their unique biological markers that say, I am self, I'm okay, do not attack. So it's foreign antigens that activate cells in the immune system or they elicit an immune response. Cancer cells also have different molecular makeup, so they have different molecules and these also provoke an immune response. So we previously learned that white blood cells are essential to fighting disease or infection and in particular in this case it's the lymphocytes, it's B cells and T cells which we'll learn about types of white blood cells. B cells are made in the red bone marrow and they mature in the red bone marrow. That's really important. And you can see where it is in the diagram here. And when they are mature, they then go into the blood. They can be found in the lymph nodes and in other lymphatic tissue like the spleen. The B cells are active in the liquid part of the body and they produce antibodies. So just associate B cells with antibody production. Everybody is born with millions of B cells and the B cells are all different because they have unique antibodies on their surface. Antibodies are sometimes referred to as antigen receptors. So every antibody can only connect with one type of antigen. So they're very specific. So each B cell can only interact with a specific antigen and only the B cell with the correct antibody will ever be activated. So here is my B lymphocyte or my B cell with a specific shaped antibody on its surface. And here is my pathogen, it could be my bacterium. And it also has uniquely shaped antigens, those molecules, those identification molecules on its surface. So one of the things that can happen is that if they are complementary, so if the antibody fits with the antigen, they will connect and it will activate that B cell. So activating B cells is a really complex process and it's beyond the scope of our course, but B cells are mostly almost never fully activated unless they get help from T cells, specifically T helper cells and the chemicals they produce. So it's beyond the scope of our course, but it just shows you that immunology is amazing. And if you're interested in science, it's a good course maybe to consider. So when the B cell is activated, it undergoes cell division. It produces many plasma cells and it also produces many memory B cells. The plasma cells, they're very special because they're going to make antibodies and the antibodies are going to be specific to that antigen. So it's really important that you remember the plasma cells, they produce the antibody and an antibody is a protein that's produced in response to a specific antigen. Really important definition. So what do antibodies actually do to help you overcome these pathogens? Well, the antibodies will flood your system and they'll attach on to that foreign antigen. So anywhere they find it, they're going to attach on and it sort of marks the pathogen, making it easily identifiable to the macrophages, you know, those cells that come and do phagocytosis. So antibodies will also activate the complement system. You remember that system of proteins and one of the things that they can do is they can burst bacterial cells and also they will gather many pathogens together so they'll clump them together and that makes it easier for phagocytosis for those macrophages to destroy them. As well as the plasma cells, memory B cells were also produced and the hint is in their name, they remember. So memory B cells will remember that specific antigen and if they ever encounter it again, they can very quickly make the particular plasma cells that make that specific antibody very quickly and they can also make more memory B cells. So basically, they're a way for your immune system of remembering the antigen they've overcome and dealing with it again.
So that was the B cells. So what about the T cells? Well, the T cells do not produce antibodies. Really important, nothing to do with antibodies. But the T cells, very like the B cells, have these receptors on their surface and they're called antigen receptors. And they are specific to one type of antigen. So they have this unique shape and it recognizes or can interact with one specific type of antigen. So your T cells are a little bit different because they are made in the red bone marrow just like your B cells but they mature in the thymus gland there in your chest. So T for thymus, T for T cells. And when they mature they move to the lymph nodes and to other lymphatic tissues like your spleen. The T cells are really important when cells become infected or cancerous. So they deal with cells mostly. So your T cells, there's four different types and we know that they mature in your thymus gland. So there's helper T cells and they're killer T cells. These are the two most important. The killer T cells are often referred to as cytotoxic cells if you're looking at other videos. And also these other types of cells are produced, these suppressor T cells. It's important to know that helper T cells, once they're activated, can produce memory T cells. And the killer T cells, once they're activated, can also produce memory T cells. So it's a really complex process and it's really oversimplified in our course, but it's fascinating. So just know that there's four types of T cells, helper T cells, killer T cells, suppressor T cells and memory T cells. So let's start with helper T cells and remember that there are millions of different types of helper T cells and they're all unique because they have that special shaped antigen receptor on their surface that recognizes or interacts with one specific type of antigen. So what do the helper T cells do? Well they activate the B cells and they also activate killer T cells. Helper T cells are essential to a fully functioning immune system. Without them, the immune system is sort of paralyzed. The reason being is that helper T cells are needed or the chemicals they produce are needed to fully activate the B cells that produce the antibodies and to fully activate those killer T cells. So if helper T cells are not working, the immune system or the immune response cannot be turned on fully and it cannot be amplified. And one disease or one virus which attacks helper T cells is HIV. And because it attacks these helper T cells, it lowers the immune response in those people that are infected with HIV. So then it's the killer T cells and once again they have that uniquely shaped antigen receptor on their surface though there's many types of killer T cells and they all differ because they all have this specific type of antigen receptor on their surface. Their role is to kill infected cells. So for example if one of your cells gets infected or if one of your cells turns rogue and becomes cancerous it will attack it and kill it and the reason why it does this is because those cells will present that foreign antigen on the surface and it will basically be recognized by a specific killer T cell with a complementary antigen receptor. So when killer cells are fully activated by those helper T cells, they will secrete this chemical called perforin and it can puncture the cell and the cell is destroyed. Memory T cells remember. So they remember the specific antigen that was encountered and should they need to, they can very quickly produce those specific helper T cells and killer T cells. Suppressor T cells are really important because they're the cells that switch off the whole response, the whole immune response once the pathogen or the infection has been overcome. So they'll basically stop antibody production, they'll inhibit it and they'll call off the killer T cells or limit their activity. So let's just go over that, the activation of those helper T cells and the killer T cells using pictures just to help us understand. These pictures are not accurate, they're just there to help you have an understanding of what's happening. So here is a helper T cell and it's unique because it has this antigen receptor or many of these antigen receptors on its surface. These particular antigen receptors will only attach to one particular type of antigen. So they're highly specific. And here we have some type of cell. It could be a macrophage that's engulfed and destroyed a pathogen. And it's now presenting the antigen of that pathogen on its surface. So because the antigen is recognized by that specific helper T cell, it attaches to the antigen. And this then stimulates the T cell to release chemicals. These chemicals fully activate it. And they'll also fully activate B cells 
cells and also killer T cells. So once this helper T cell is activated, it actually undergoes division to produce many other identical helper T cells and also those memory T cells. So once those helper T cells activate the specific killer T cells, they too will undergo division to produce many other identical killer T cells and also those memory T cells. So let's discuss the primary immune response. This is the first time that your immune system encounters a particular foreign antigen. And so when it does the first time, it takes it quite a few days, up to two weeks, to really adapt and to figure out how to make the particular antibody. So it takes time for those B cells to be activated so that they can make the correct antibody. So the primary response can take up to two weeks. So when you're discussing the primary response, it's slower and it takes longer. That's because your immune system is learning how to deal with that particular antigen. The secondary immune response is what happens the next time that foreign antigen is encountered or presented or subsequent times after that. Well, because you've produced those memory B cells and those memory T cells in the first encounter, the immune system knows what to do. It knows how to produce the correct plasma B cells that produce those antibodies and those specific helper T cells and killer T cells with that correct antigen receptor. So the plasma B cells, they'll produce produce the specific antibody very quickly and in response to a small amount of antigen. So they know what to do and they only need a tiny bit of antigen to figure out what to do. And the correct antibody is produced faster and in large quantities. So you could say the secondary response is faster and much more efficient and it's all to do with those memory B cells and memory T cells. So at the end of this, make sure you can define antigen, define antibody, know where B cells are made and where they mature, know that B cells or the plasma cells produce specific antibodies, know where T cells are produced and where they mature, know the four types of T cells and what each of them do, and know what T cell is attacked by the HIV virus and the impact of this, and be able to compare the primary and secondary immune responses and discuss these. So the best of luck. I hope the revision is going well. Remember, exam questions, using your book, writing good notes, the best of luck.